Help support the companies that support our community. All right, I have a couple pieces of maple burl here. So these were out of a, uh, a table, a uh, coffee table. So a few years ago, my aunt called and she said, ask if we were home. I said, no, we're not. And she goes, oh, all right, I'm just gonna leave it on your porch then. So she found the top to a coffee table that was about three feet around at a garage sale for five bucks. It was, I get home, some of it was cracked up as far as the whole whole piece but there's just some beautiful wood in there so i've been taking little chunks out of it over the last few years using it up when i can it's just beautiful wood so this is going to be i'm going to do a lidded box this is going to be the bottom of it so i'm going to turn that and we'll get the threaded rings in get a tenon down on this and we'll start shaping it on it pull this off of here put the chuck on and grab it with that and then we can shape it and hollow it out change the jaws real quick shape the outside of it and start working on hollowing it out. All right, have it all trued up. So I'm gonna put a small band here on the, the base and I'm gonna do it on a little one on the lid too, but I'm gonna put a band there and then bring it down and we'll do a little bit of wire burning. So what I'm gonna do is use the beading tool, but I'm going to use the small beads. I'm just gonna do a band with like five little beads in it and then we'll, we'll burn those and then shape the, shape the sides of it. And I will put in the description what size that one is. I can't, can't remember right now, but it'll be down in the description. So we have those in there and then I'm going to turn this material away here in a second. But I want to use the wire burner to burn those lines right there. So this first one here I don't need to burn or that one, just the ones in the middle there. I have the lace bead at 2000 RPM.
have that rounded over there so right up against the bead there you can't get right in that edge there so and I want to bring that down to make it look like these are standing up, up uh, taller so what I'm going to do is use the square carbide and get right in there and bring that down Since I have it right here, I'm just going to do the other side too and bring that down so I can shape the bottom. Now I'm going to start hollowing it out, but I want to set the bronze rings in there. So these are bronze threaded rings, and these are two and a half inch size right here. So I need to make a recess for that, and this part right here will set down inside of it. And these are, they're gnarled, they're grooved, and they're like gnarled up. You can feel them when you run your finger across it. Same with this one. This one's going to go in the lid, but you run your finger across it one way and it's smooth, and the other way it, it catches, so you know which way it needs to go in. So the the part that catches needs to go down, like into it. When they when they're made, they're together like that, so that catches that way, catches that way. So when the, that way it grabs a hold of the wood. Let me get the calipers, and we will figure out what the diameter is right there. All right, the calipers. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than this so I, I don't go too far over. Take your calipers up there, turn the lathe speed on. You only want to touch on this side. Put it down with the tool rest, and you can see where it shows up on the other side. So that's a little big. And you can see you're not touching this one, but you can see when it when it lines back up with it. There's our size right there. That's gonna be a little bit small. So yeah, don't go crazy and make it too big. Alright. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and use the square cutter again. Just come in there. And get that that butter pretty close. adjust it as we go. This is the round number one hollower. A little bit high. Get out, Get out some of this material here. So this is going to sit down in there. You want to leave, leave a little bit of material there so that it's going to sit down up against that. Don't need a whole lot. About like that. It does need to recess down in there though. So we wanna, don't want to come around and take out too much right away. We'll get this all set before we move on. Test it real quick. Make sure we didn't go overboard. Really close. Just 
kind of take your time. There we go. So you can see I need to go down a little bit deeper on it. And we are going to take away some of that wood on top. So I'm going to sink it down in there just a little bit. about a sixteenth or so. so let's clean up the top of it real quick and then make sure it's nice and flush and for that we can just use the number one hauler again Now you can just go ahead and start hollowing out the inside of it. And I'm going to epoxy the, the, this in with just five minute epoxy. And I use the uh, JB Weld five minute epoxy, but I, it just any epoxy will work. You just need to get it, get it secure in there and that's pretty tight. That's your little shelf right there. So you will come in after that and then you start hollowing it out. All right, I have it all hollowed out. I'm gonna go ahead and sand it, but I'm gonna sand it dry. So I'm gonna turn the dust collector on and I'm just gonna sand this portion and the inside real quick. And I'm gonna stay away from this because that's a nice tight fit already. So, and the reason I'm sanding it dry is because I need to epoxy this in when we're all done. So I'm gonna do that and I'll get the dust collector on and I'll come back and I will We'll flip it around. We'll use this recess to grab it with the jaws and expand it to finish off the bottom. All right, I have this all sanded up to 600. I sanded the inside too. We're gonna pull it up out of the chuck here and flip it around. I think that's too big. I need to change the jaws again. Oop. use these to expand inside that recess just like so and then we'll bring the tailstock up and it still has that center point so we can line it right back up and give it a little bit of support why we're right in there open these up a little bit, put a little bit of pressure on it. Not too much. Just like so. And we can get that off and finish and sand that. Alright, and then we'll lay the feet back up to the 2000. just a little bit. sand all of this. I'm still not going to put the oil on it till the very end. I'm going to take the little detailer and get right in there and bring that nub down just a little bit.
being held in by the by the top. So we can take that off there. Like so. Then sand it up. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna turn the dust collector on, sand this all up, and then we'll then we'll pull it off. Alright, I have it all sanded up to 600. Take this off of there. So I'm gonna glue in the, the threaded ring first and then I'll put the oil on it when we're all done. So let's go ahead and get started on the, the lid and that is going to be from the other piece of wood. Take this off and put the spur center back in. have that piece tightened in there so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I'm going to true this up and put a tenon down on this end and then we'll get the chuck back on the lathe All right, same thing with this. The calipers are already set. They, the rings are the same size. We're just gonna hold that up against there and just touch this one side. So you kind of, you see where the line's going, but if I did it like way out there, you can see that the, that doesn't line up anywhere close to that. So you just gotta kind of play with the little bit. That's a little bit big. Now we're going to use the square easy wood again just to get that little spot there. And we'll refine it a little bit when we get, get a little closer. So in this, same thing on this. You want that to recess in there and sit all the way down, down flush. With this though, you can set that in there on a little le ledge, oops, wrong side, on the ledge there, and you can hollow out the inside of it you know, to reduce the weight on it. So, after I just get that all set and down in there, I can clean out some of this material. Go, go slow on it. Just keep turning the lathe off, coming back to it. It's still got yeah, quite a bit to come off. And just remember when you're taking material up here, it, it seems like it's a little teeny bit, but it's the same all the way around, so it's a lot more than you might think. That's why it's just best to just go slow and keep keep testing it. Alright, we're getting that close.
I'm just gonna put it in on one side. Oh, that's all the way down, so you can see I need to go, go a little bit deeper because it's still sticking up. So I'll just bring that apart down. Clean out a little bit in the middle here, real quick. Same thing on this, we're going to use the, the actual uh, tenon here to, to go. Looks like I need to go just a little bit more. Then we're going to use that tenon when we flip it around and we can shape and, and uh, finish off the top of it. That should be plenty. And there you go. So it's a little little bit under, but we do need to clean up and, and sand this a little bit. So that should work. There we go. Went right in. Yeah, actually it's like just barely under it. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go down a little bit further just to because I need to clean up some of this. Taking a pass across that and sanding it, that will that will work. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the this one in here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and thread this on a little bit. And I want to see where it's gonna sit. So I wanted to the lid to sit right down on here. So when I'm shaping it. I mean, a lot of this material is going to be taken away, but I just want to make sure that I can test it as I go. So, we'll just keep an eye on that as we're doing it. it it's sticking up just a little bit there so I want that to sit set flush down on here so what I'm gonna do is is cup this out just a little bit and I'm probably gonna make have to make that recess a little bit deeper so let's cup it out until it fits in there nice Alright, 
think that is the right angle and I just need to bring the recess down. together nice a nice tight seal that's perfect all right so we can go ahead and start I'm going to bring down some of this material and then I'll flip the whole thing around and finish out the top but I'm just going to bring it bring down the the majority of this that way I'm not have to do it when it's in the chuck expanded I'm going to run through all the grits again with it and uh, with the dust collector on. So I'm going to sand up all of this, this lip, and a little bit around here before we move on. So let me get the dust collector on and then I'll come back and then we'll flip it, change the jaws and flip it around again. All right, have it all sanded up. Let's go ahead and flip it around. I won't make you watch changing the jaws again. All right. And then we'll get the tailstock pulled back up and get the, this part turned off. All right, got it all set back up. Let's go ahead and get this material off here. And I'm gonna do a little finial on it, and then I'm gonna burn some uh, burn some lines in it too, just like we did on the on the base. I think I'm going to bring it down a little bit further, but I want to do some beads on this, but I'm going to, I, I think it's too big. I want to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to keep, keep working on it here and just keep bringing it down until it, until it looks right. looks a little big. And I'm going to leave that little, little nub right there to support it when I'm using the beading tool, but I'll take that off afterwards. I just want to leave that up there so it doesn't vibrate too much. I think that's good. All right, now I'm gonna take that beading tool, same one, the small beads, and I need to change the tool rest here real quick. And get it right back up in there. I can get as close as I can to it. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pull this material right here back so it, the beads are standing up proud. But I'm going to go ahead and burn it first. Just like that. And then we'll 
get in there and, and bring down that material just a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to use the square cutter to get right up against it. Uh, five minute epoxy on those. I'm just gonna mix up some here. And maybe too much, but it's all good. And just remember it there are ridge they're grooved all the way around there so it's not that big a deal but there is a way a certain way they kind of go in and you can you can feel it when you run your finger across them make sure that's all mixed in good Then <clears throat> you can put it on, on the threads all the way around. Just don't put it too much up because they are, you know, tight. And when you put them in, you don't want it oozing out over the top of it. So this will adhere to the wood and harden up. And then it's in all those grooves too. So you're going to get a nice, nice seal. It's going to go all the way around it. That way it seals up all the way. I'm just kind of cleaning off the, any excess that's on there. Put that right in there. Press down on it. Make sure it's all flush all the way around. There we go. And then the same thing with this one. So it goes in that way. So oops. now we're gonna do the same thing with that one. I'm gonna feel it before I put the epoxy on. And you can put it put this on the inside too. I'll just I'll do it on the inside with this one. And it's a little harder to hold on to. Just go all the way around. to get it on the, the wood or on the top of it where you're going to see and try not to get too much in there so that it squirts out on the bottom all right there we go and group that way drop that right in there press it down all right, and this stuff is, it says it's five minute uh, 
epoxy or five minute cure time. I usually let it set up for, I don't know, about 15 or 20. It's the same epoxy I use for the stainless steel inserts for the bottle stoppers. So it's the same stuff. All right, let that set up and then we'll get some oil on it. All right, so I let these set up overnight and so it's actually Thursday morning. That is like yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. So we're, we're editing the video last night, getting it all ready. Come out this morning and put the lid on the top. And it does not look good. It, it doesn't flow together. So we're going to try and fix it right now. <laughs> all right. So when I first got these two, I don't make a, you know, a lot of stuff to sell anymore but I was thinking about it when we got these as far as you know gluing the rings in first even before you really started turning much of it and using them as like a, a jig to hold them so that's what we're gonna do I just took grabbed one I'm gonna use this tighten it up here don't go crazy on it just a little bit right on there and we can screw our lid right on it. Well, I'm gonna like, take a few passes on it and try and bring this down because it just doesn't look good with the box. I like the shape of the lid alone and the box, but together, not good. So, using the, the actual inserts like that, you could do it the other way around too. You could use the, the uh, female one to Mount it in there and put this thread this on and turn the outside of your box with it too if you wanted to if you were doing doing a bunch of urns or lidded boxes and things like that it might even speed up the whole process. All right, I'm going to just take a spindle gouge, come down here and try and bring some of this mass down. I don't have so the insert is in there, you know, a little ways, but it it comes up about that far, so I can't take off too much material. Let's try and fix it. All right, there we go. So it brought down a little bit of the material um, and took some of the bulkiness out of it. I can't go much further than that. So it is what it is at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the dust collector back on, sand this all up and then we'll get some oil on it. All right, have it brought down a little bit. It is what it is at this point. I can't, uh, <laughs> can't, uh, going smaller but it looks much better it was really raised up before so much better proportion so let's get some oil on this thing all right go ahead and do the lid first and it is just beautiful maple Tons of great color in it. I love how that's a lot darker up there than it is down there. And go ahead and get all this coated. And then the actual little pot, put some in the inside. Just go around. I'm used to doing this on the lathe while it's running. It's a little easier then. Very nice. Look at that. Yard sale. You can't beat yard sales. Just beautiful. Alright. Get this all down in all the little grooves. Well, you made it to the end. Thank you for hanging in there. There it is. Again, it is out of Maple Burl. About four and a half inches in diameter and five inches tall. And 
the lid screws right on there like that. So these bronze uh, threaded rings are two and a half inches. We also, on the Niles uh, website, we have three and a half inch ones and we're coming out with a smaller size really soon. So they just recess down in there. It's pretty easy to do. It's, I was kind of talking a little bit in the video too about if you were, you were making a bunch of these or urns, you can use the inserts to kind of speed up the whole process. I'm gonna look into too, like a Forstner bit. So you could just use the Forstner bit to drill in there, set your rings, and then you could, you know, go from there. I think that would kind of speed up the whole process to it. But they thread right on, just like so, like that. And bringing the lid down, I still think it's a little bit big as for the box, but I'm much happier. It, it just was too big, too big before, but happy with how it turned out. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next week. Take care.